Welcome back to the channel guys. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use an electronic parking brake in a custom application. The parking brake that I use are from a Tesla and they're manufactured by Brembo. The Tesla harness has four uh, pins. We're gonna use the two outside pins and we won't use the two inside pins. If you hook positive or negative to this pin, do the opposite to this one, and then the piston will go either in or out. In this case, we have positive hook to the left terminal, negative to the right terminal. And if we ground out our alligator clip, you'll see that the terminal or the piston is being pushed in. Now, if you flip them and ground it out, you'll see that the piston should do the opposite. So the piston in this electronic parking brake is driven by a series of gears that allows for a pretty impressive clamping force. And with that, a more scientific means of showing you, I stuck a piece of wood in there and we're just gonna clamp down on it and see what happens. And there you have it. So this is a diagram that I came up with to run the electronic parking brake in my Jeep. We got positive going out through a circuit breaker to pin 30 on a standard automotive relay. The reason we have it running through a circuit breaker is in case we get a little too aggressive with our parking brake and we don't release the switch after it's already clamped down all the way, it'll pop the, the circuit breaker. And to reset it, we'll just push our button and then we're good to go again. From here, we have pin 85 is grounded. Pin 86 is getting the signal from your brake switch. And whenever it senses that you've pushed on your brake, 12 volts will go to pin 86, thus shorting 30 to 87. So this original 12 volts can go through the relay and then go over to this pin on your switch right here and now we have power to the switch so basically when we push on the brake we have power to the switch nothing's happening yet with the parking brakes until we push up or we push down the reason i wanted to do that was because i didn't want to be able to engage the parking brake unless i was physically stepping on the brake that way i can't accidentally bump this up or down while i'm driving because you don't want <laughs> you don't want the parking brake to engage while you're driving all this switch does is gives positive one way to a terminal, and when you flip it the other way, it flips the polarity. So one way drives the piston in, will lock your parking brake, the other way disengages the parking brake. Whenever you're done, have it in off. This isn't the switch that I'm actually using. I'm using a momentary one. So it's spring-loaded. When you push up, you actually have to physically hold it up to keep it engaged. When you release, it'll automatically go to off. It rests and off. So this is my switch that I'm using to run my electronic parking brake. As you can tell, I'm not pressing on the brake and nothing is happening with the brake itself. If I push on the brake, you'll hear a click. And that is the relay clicking open and closed. So now that I push on the brake, you'll see the switch light up and you'll hear the whirring of the motor engaging the parking brake. And you hear it clamp down. That's how I know when to stop. It's pretty loud. And then to back it off, I can't do it unless my foot's on the brake. And I'm backed off. Again, don't push on anything. My brake doesn't work. If I'm pushing on the brake, it clamps down. I have my circuit breaker right under the dash right there, keeps it out of the way and leaves me with a clean dash. You will still need to be able to run your brake caliper as well as the electronic parking brake. So you'll need a dual brake caliper bracket. You can buy these online, but all I did was take a Ford Explorer brake caliper bracket, take two of them, cut it, cut them both down the middle and then weld them together. Welding it was really easy because after you've cut both brackets down the middle. You can mount them both directly to the axle tube and then just weld it straight down the middle and you'll know that you're perfectly centered. And the brake caliper fits 
perfectly in there. And I will measure that so you'll know if this specific caliper will work for your application. The bolt holes to mount the electronic parking brake are about 3.6 inches apart. And here you guys go. This is the Tesla brake installed. A few parting thoughts. One of these could easily be adapted to use as a transmission brake or a driveline brake. I use it a lot whenever I'm rock crawling. I can be at pretty extreme angles and I can lock it and I don't go anywhere. They also make for a pretty good theft deterrent and that somebody trying to steal the Jeep or your vehicle would probably not be able to figure out how to disengage the brake. And finally, there is no voltage draw for it to hold the brake. So you can set it and you're not going to lose any battery. I've been running this setup for a few years with no issues to date. One of the big changes I did make was running it through the brake switch. Used to have it running through the toggle that I wired up that acted as a kill switch as a safety feature. I then switched to the brake switch just because I thought it was more refined and one less toggle on my dash. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it, please subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.